Hi guys, Olive here, here today to talk about what I plan on reading in December 2023. It's the final month of the year. I don't quite know how we ended up here, but here we are. It is almost the end of 2023, and because of that, I'm going to be focused in December on closing out my reading year. I have some project books left outstanding that I very much want to finish up because I would like to conclude those projects before going into some 2024 projects. I'd like to enjoy some fiction. I always exclusively read nonfiction during nonfiction November, and that's what I did again this year. So it'll be fun to incorporate some fiction books back into the mix. And I'm hoping that some of the books I read this month will end up on my year-end favorites list. Since I mentioned I'm going to be enjoying some novels this month, let's start off by talking about those. There is a new release from early this year that's just been calling to me. It's called The Love Scribe by Amy Meyerson. This is all about a woman who writes stories that have the ability to make people fall in love. I love a good romance this time of year. And I also tend to enjoy things around this time of year that are lightly magical. And this book has both of those things going on. So it just felt natural to pick it up this month. The other two novels I want to read this month are also both new releases. But in the case of these two, they came out either just before or or during November. And like I said before, I only read nonfiction during November. So I decided I would read these two in December instead. The first of those two is called Let the Dead Bury the Dead by Alison Epstein. This is a work of historical fiction set in Imperial Russia following the defeat of Napoleon. A mysterious woman shows up to court, shaking things up considerably and making everyone question whether or not she's a creature of myth. Again, I like things with a whiff of the magical around this time of year. And then there's also the fact that this book is set in St. Petersburg, a city I know and love, but one that I will likely never get back to. So this will be bittersweet to read, but I can't wait. I am also over the moon excited about The Liberators by E.J. Co. Since this author's memoir, which was called The Magical Language of Others, is a book that has never left me. It really, really made its mark on me. I still love recommending that book. I still think about it all the time. And so when I heard that she was going to be releasing a novel, I made sure to keep an eye out for any news on it. I was waiting for a title. I was waiting for a release date. And I was so excited to see when that release date came out, except, of course, it came out in November, the month that I don't read fiction. But now that December is here, I'm not going to wait one more minute to read this multi-generational family saga set in Korea. I think I'm going to love this. Two of my nonfiction picks are new releases as well. Apparently, that's just what I'm in the mood for here at the end of the year. But similarly to EJ Co., when I heard that Margaret Rankle had a new book coming out this year, I knew I had to read it, but more than that, I knew I had to own it because her books are so beautiful. So from Margaret Rankle's local bookstore, Parnassus, I pre-ordered a signed copy of The Comfort of Crows. This is an essay collection. It's a year's worth of nature observations from her own backyard. And it is once again, gorgeously illustrated by her brother. I love Margaret Rankle. I've loved both of her previous books. I've gotten to meet her in person. She's a delight. I will just be shocked if this disappoints. But for nostalgia's sake, especially as we're heading into the Christmas season here, I thought it would be fun to pick up Dolls of Our Lives by Alison Horrocks and Mary Mahoney, which was written by co-hosts of a podcast that discusses the American Girl doll. I think this book was probably intended to be a companion book to that podcast. I've sadly never listened to it. I'm hoping to have some time to listen to it in December. But apparently it's going to be a deep dive into these historically inspired dolls. I never owned one myself, but my friends did have them. So I would play with them. And like all the other children of my generation, I was enamored of them. So I'm really excited to read this. But since I mentioned Christmas, I will use that to segue into my next December TBR pick, which is Christmas, a biography by Judith Flanders, which is a history of the holiday and all of its traditions and myths. You will probably understand why I felt compelled to pick this up in December. Then to close out this final TBR of the year, I have two last picks from my 23 nonfiction books to read in 2023 list. Once again, I'm going to attempt to read Dark Skies by Tiffany Francis, a history of our relationship with nighttime and the night sky. I had attempted to read this back in January before getting distracted by other books. I decided to put it off until the days got shorter again and nighttime felt a little bit longer. That felt like the right time of year to read this. And that time is now. And especially because this is on my 2023 list and 2023 is all but over, 
I'm going to make a more concerted push to actually get this read. But it won't take much convincing for me to pick up the other pick off of that list because it's Complications by Atul Gawande, the first book from the author of Being Mortal, which is one of my all-time favorite nonfiction books. In this book, he discusses his surgical training and his views on medicine ever since falling in love with being mortal. I've been wanting to go back and read all the books in his back catalog. So I am so excited to read this one finally. Then with whatever time I have left over during the month of December, and I'm hoping to have some time left over, I'm hoping that it's not quite as busy of a month for me in my personal life. I'm hoping to have a little bit more reading time. I will definitely be working on finishing up that 23 priority nonfiction books list. I'll have to consult that list and see which ones I still have left outstanding because ideally, I I want to have every last book on that list read before 2024 rolls around because I have a new list of nonfiction books that I want to read in 2024. I'll be sharing that with you here very shortly. But come 2024, I'm going to be focused on those books and not the 2023 books. So I want to have all of those finished. And then if I have any time beyond that, I might go back to previous month's TBRs and see if I can get any outstanding books off of those read. Again, my focus of December is just going to be tying loose ends, closing out 2023 so I can be ready for what 2024 has in store. But if any of the books I spoke about today appeal to you, if you want to read them, if you have read them and you want to share your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you down in the comment section below. We can chat there. All the books that I did mention today will be linked for you in the description box below. They're there for your click and convenience. And at the very bottom of that exact same description box, you will also see links to everywhere you can find me around the internet, like Goodreads, Instagram, The Story Graph, all the places I'm the most active, in case you want to keep up with what I'm reading and doing right now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.